Hi, welcome back. In this video, I thought I would do a review of the Orbit Beehive water timer system that can be controlled using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. It's a two-part system, so I'll go into the details on how each part works, so stick around until the end. Since we're pretty much in the hot days of summer, we all know the importance of keeping our plants, garden, and yards watered, but more importantly, making sure we don't water too much. Applying too much water is a double-edged sword because you can end up causing root rot for your plants as well as just wasting water. It's very important to make sure you're not wasting water, especially if you're in areas like Arizona where they have water restrictions. This is where a water timer can become extremely useful. They allow you to run the water sprinklers at whatever schedule that you set. So the water timers can fine tune how much water is being used for different zones on your property as well as when to water those zones. However, most traditional water timers require some sort of manual intervention if you want to set a rain delay. A rain delay is simply telling the timer to skip a certain number of days of watering if rain is in the forecast. If you're like me and you're forgetful with a hint of laziness, then I'm sure there are going to be days where you forget to set a rain delay and your sprinklers are running while it's raining outside. It's happened to me plenty of times. That's where this Orbit Beehive system comes into play. I bought this specifically because I just wanted a set it and forget it type of system where I don't have to manually set a rain delay if rain is in the forecast. The first part of this system is the Bluetooth water timer. Let's unpack this thing so you can see how it looks. I got the 4 outlet Bluetooth water timer because I have multiple zones that I would need to cover. The size of this water timer is slightly bigger than your traditional 4 outlet timer so it's not too big. It costs about 70 bucks nowadays and you'll find it at the big box home improvement stores as well as Amazon. In the package, Orbit does provide a small quick start guide to help you with the setup. The inlet connector that attaches to the faucet is lined with brass for a solid connection. The tightening attachment around the inlet is made of a durable rubber material so hand tightening this thing is pretty easy. The four outlet connectors are made of a hard plastic material but would be best if you hand tighten anything that goes on here. On the back you'll notice some guidelines on water pressure and operating temperatures. This water timer is made in China. There's also the battery compartment which is similar to the traditional water timers. It uses two AA batteries and I've found that this timer can run on those two batteries for an entire season without having to replace them. The battery compartment does have a seal around it to help keep water out and protect the batteries. So I'm just going to add some batteries and fire this thing up. The dial on the front allows you to toggle through the options. Pressing the dial is what allows you to select and edit times as well as zones. This is a similar process to the traditional water timers. I'm not going to adjust too much on here manually because the whole purpose of this thing is to make me more lazy and use my phone. So let's get the app installed on the phone and start setting things up. I have an iPhone, but the steps should be similar for an Android phone as well. In the App Store, search for Orbit Beehive with the unique spelling. There's a couple of different versions of the app. I just went with the first one that came up. Once downloaded, create your account. It'll then prompt you to add a new device. In the next screen, I chose this is a new device since I was setting this up for the first time. After that, you'll see a bunch of products that you can select. Choose the one that matches your device. For this video, I'm choosing the last one, which is the Beehive XD for port timer. Now this next screen will tell you to make sure your device is powered up and within range. Here's the thing, this timer connects via Bluetooth, so you'll need to have the timer near your phone while you're doing this setup. Once ready, click the My Device is Powered On option. It will search for a bit and then the screen will show that it found a device. You'll need to double check the MAC address which can be found on the timer itself. After it connects, it will give you a success page letting you know that the device can be controlled over Bluetooth as well as adding a hub to control it over Wi-Fi. We'll get to that part in a minute. Click continue to proceed with the setup. The next screen will allow you to give the timer a name. I just 
just went with the default smart hose tap timer and proceeded. The app will then check the firmware of the device and update it if needed. It looked like mine was pretty much out of date, so this took about five minutes to download and update. Now it will ask you for your address so that it can gather weather information for your area. You can either type in your address or click the use current location button, which is actually pretty accurate. Next, it will test the four outlets of the timer, which the app identifies each outlet as a zone. It would be good for you to set up the water timer to an outdoor faucet at this point, just so you can make sure each outlet of the timer works when the tests are being run. Just cycle through each zone and make sure water goes through each outlet when the test is being run. You don't have to let it run for too long, just hit the stop button once you see the water coming through the outlet. With each zone, you can see under the number there's a little camera icon. If you click that, you can actually take a picture of where you will be watering with that particular zone. So for me, I'll be watering some emerald greens for zone 1, so I took a picture of them. Afterward, you'll be able to name the zone. In this case, my zone 1 will be emerald greens. I repeated this process of testing each zone and naming them until I was all done with this part of the setup. Now, you'll see the home screen and right in the middle of the screen, you'll notice that it states that you have no program scheduled. This is where you will create Create the watering schedules you want for each zone. If you click in that area, it will take you to the screen where you can add the watering schedules. Click in program slot A to set your first schedule. It will give you two options of basic or advanced. To keep things simple, I chose the basic program. First, it will ask you to name the schedule. Since I'm making the schedule for my first zone, which is the emerald greens, I'll just name the schedule emerald greens and click next. You will then need to set a start time. I'm just going to set it to 6 a.m. and click next. Now it will ask you how often you want to water. This is a really versatile option in that you can water as frequent as one hour, which is extremely useful if you planted new grass seed and need to keep the ground moist, just as an example. You can also stretch out the waterings as much as every 32 days. For my emerald greens, I'm just going to set this to every two days. And finally, you'll be able to set how long you want this area to be watered. You can set it as low as one minute or as high as 59 minutes. I'll set this schedule to water for 20 minutes. Click the little green check mark to confirm, verify your settings for the schedule, and then click save in the upper right corner. I then repeated this process for all the zones on my property. The second zone was for my front yard, third zone for the flower beds, and the fourth zone for the vegetable garden. So now that we have the Bluetooth timer set up, I'll go ahead and show you how to configure the Orbit Beehive Wi-Fi Hub. This is a separate piece that sells for about 35 bucks, and it basically acts as a connection point for the Beehive Bluetooth water timer. When you set up this hub, the Bluetooth timer connects to this hub via Bluetooth and essentially allows the timer to be controlled via Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi hub is a basic design with a two-prong standard plug. The hub actually blends in pretty well with any setting. It does need to be within a reasonable distance of the Bluetooth timer. I plug this in into a wall outlet in my garage, which is about 10 feet from where the timer is set up. I believe Orbit claims their Bluetooth timer range is up to 150 feet, but I wouldn't bet the farm on that claim. If you can find a plug that is within 50 to 60 feet of the Bluetooth water timer, this hub should work without any connection issues. Once you have the hub plugged into an outlet, open up the Beehive app on your phone and click My Beehive on the bottom of the screen. Then click Devices followed by clicking the little plus icon to add a new device. Again, it will ask if it's a new device. Select the option that best matches your situation. For me, I selected this is a new device. In the list of devices, scroll down and select Hub. The app will ask you to verify if the device is powered on and ready to go. Click the button to start the connection process. It should find the hub and you'll have to verify the MAC address again, which I found the MAC address on the back of the hub. If all looks good, click this matches my device 
and the app will attempt to connect to the hub. Once it connects, you'll now be able to set the Wi-Fi information. It usually picks the closest Wi-Fi with the best signal, but you can always click the little icon on the right of the Wi-Fi network name to bring up a list of Wi-Fi networks within range. Pick your Wi-Fi network and enter the password to connect. It may take a few seconds for the hub to connect to the network. You can then give the hub a new name. The app will then check the firmware and download if needed. The app will then prompt if you want to use the physical address that was entered in the earlier step. Confirm or enter a new address if needed. After all the configs are done, it will give a final confirmation page. Just click start using my device. There will be a message showing switching device, which the app is basically connecting to the Bluetooth water timer now through the Wi-Fi hub. At this point, as long as your home Wi-Fi is available, you'll be able to control your water timer from anywhere in the world. Hopefully you haven't fallen asleep yet. The Wi-Fi hub will actively keep an eye on the weather forecast for your area and automatically set the rain delay. You'll get these cool notifications on your phone that the water timer has been set with a rain delay if rain isn't the forecast for your area. I've found that the rain delay works pretty good. There have only been one or two occasions this season where a rain delay was set because there was a chance of showers in the forecast and then nature never gave us the rain. Like stated, this hasn't happened often so none of my plants were affected. You can also water manually by selecting this option for manual watering. Now I'll show you some of the other features of the Beehive app so that you can get an idea of how capable this system is. On the home screen, you'll be able to see how much battery life the timer has as well as the current weather in your area. If you click this little drop down, you'll be able to see the watering components in your network. There's also a shop tab where you can easily link to some of the other products that Orbit offers. Nice marketing on Orbit's side. In the middle of the screen, you can toggle through your scheduled programs and see when they will run next. You can manually set a rain delay if you would like. I've never actually had to use the manual rain delay option with this system. You can also choose to water manually as explained just a short while ago. If you click the calendar icon, it will give you a calendar view of the weather forecast for your area. The program icon shows all the watering schedules you have set up. You can update these watering schedules as needed. There's also this smart watering icon up here. Smart watering can automate your watering system even more if you have a larger system like the irrigation controller. With that system, you'll be able to further customize based off of your landscape needs. There's also this watering restrictions option, which is useful if you live in an area where the city or town may restrict when you can use the water for watering plants. However, in my situation, none of this is needed, and I just stick to the watering schedules that I have set up. Clicking on the zones icon will show you all the zones you have set up. You can edit these if needed here. Clicking on the My Beehive icon down here, you'll see several options. The first option of Beehive account allows you to view all the info about your account. Here you can change your username or password, see any Alexa or Google device integration. You can also integrate with Flume, which is a smart water meter system that can show you how much water you're using and if there's any leaks in your system. The devices section just shows you all the devices that are in your system. You can click into each device and make various adjustments as needed. I do like this weather adjustment screen. This is where you can see which weather station Orbit is pulling their data from, which I think is pretty cool. You can switch to another weather station if you want to. You can also adjust the threshold for the rain delay. So you can see the default setting is if the chance of precipitation is 30% and the expected amount of rain is 0.125 inches for a given day, the orbit timer will set a rain delay. You can adjust these thresholds to your liking, which I think is pretty cool. There's also a wind delay based off of the expected wind forecast for the day. If the expected wind is going to exceed 20 miles per hour for the day, the timer will set a wind speed delay. To be honest, I've never actually seen a wind speed 
speed delay and we've had some pretty windy days. There's also a freeze delay, but you should be packing this timer indoors if the temps are dipping near to freezing. Within the devices section, you can grant access to others to manage the water timer, which is also a cool feature. You can also update firmware, reset the device connection, and even remove the device if needed. Device groups would be applicable if you had a larger system of devices. In my case, it's not applicable. Watering history is pretty nice in that you can view how much you've watered throughout a given period of time. If you have the smart irrigation controller, you'd be able to see even more data like the amount of gallons of water used. The notifications section allows you to select which notifications you would receive in regards to watering. The help section will provide information on frequently asked questions as well as common scenarios you would see with the LED indicator lights on the devices. Feedback just allows you to provide Orbit feedback on how their app and devices are doing. Alright, that about wraps up all the information in regards to the app. I hope it was useful for you. As far as, you know, would I recommend this timer and Wi-Fi hub? Absolutely. As stated in the beginning of the video, ensuring your plants get the right amount of water is crucial in maintaining their health. This water timer setup lets you fine tune how much water you're using and will also save you money on your water bill. As mentioned, there are some occasions where the rain delay may not be 100% accurate, but it's so rare that it doesn't really make a big difference. And here are some important precautions. This water timer, again, is similar to all other timers in that you must disconnect it and bring it indoors when the nighttime temperatures trend low later in the season just to avoid freezing. Also, I highly recommend removing the batteries before storing it indoors so that the battery acid doesn't leak and cause damage to the timer. I've had this timer for two years now, and even after removing the batteries for several months, the settings that I had already set are stored in the memory cache, and when I started up the next season, all the settings and watering schedules were still there. The Orbit Beehive product line also includes many other components like smart single output water timers, smart flood sensors, and smart shrub and flower bed drip irrigation systems, so definitely check out their product product line on their website. If you like this video, please do consider subscribing as we do a lot of product reviews and DIY tips to help you out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.